Hey guys, welcome to another episode lesson on uh, learning C game programming. Uh, where I left off last lesson, I was teaching you guys a little bit about drawing images. And uh, we had a white square that we can move around with the keyboard. And then we had some star images that I drew on top. And um, I made a couple changes since that on, uh, on my own, and I'm going to walk you through them real quick. Um, first thing I did was I, I added some new artwork. I took a, um, a man sprite from an old game that I made a long time ago. Uh, I added two animation frames for him for walking and, uh, well, the two steps of walking. And then I added a brick ledge pattern that we're going to use for ledges uh, for the guy to walk on. Um, one of the things I went ahead and did uh, was I replaced the white square with a render copy call which renders the man as opposed to the square. So now moving around the keyboard we have the man instead of the white square. Um, so now that we have a man that we can move around with the keyboard it's not that interesting without having game objects in our game world uh, that we can utilize for him to walk on otherwise once we do add some degree of limited physics he's just gonna fall right through the sky which is stupid. So I went ahead and added a new struct called ledge which is basically a glorified rectangle. It has an X, Y, and a width and a height. Uh, and I went ahead and made the ledge. Um, I already have created the SDL textures and loaded them like I showed you last time with the, the man's frames and the brick uh, inside the, the main game state struct. So now we have uh, an array of two man frames, which is the two images I showed you and the brick. Um, I also added um, now 100 ledges into the game state struct. Walking down, um, changes I made into load game. Um, as you can see, I now load the man frames in. Um, and like I showed you last time, when you do that, you create a surface temporarily, and then you create the texture from the surface you get, and then you free out the surface when you're done with it and keep the texture around so you can draw. Um, so I went ahead and did that to load the man. I got the brick now, so I got a brick texture. Uh, stuff you guys have all seen before, at least types of things. And then what I went ahead and did was I added another for loop to initialize the ledges um, that the guy can walk on. And basically what I did was I just made a road of, I laid them out, you know, width. So the, the, the ledges are 256 by 64 pixels, and I just created a ledge every 256 pixels to create a road of them with the exception of the very last one which I threw up in the uh, kind of in the sky of the uh, the first screen or, or the, the screen itself. So I went ahead and did that. Um, then I added some calls to process events or no I didn't. Uh, I added some uh, stuff to do render uh, so that I can draw the ledges which is pretty straightforward. It's just a for loop that draws the ledges much like I drew the stars I went ahead and commented out the drawing of the stars just so I could see what I'm doing with the ledges for now. And this draws each ledge, which is useful. And then inside the main game loop, I added a function call to collision detect. And this is the main function that we use uh, for detecting collision uh, in the game um, with ledges. So let me show you how this works. I went ahead and made this last night because I always have to trial and error my way through collision detection. If I went and tried to show you guys in the video, it would have been a 45 minute long video of you guys watching me trial and error my way through. Um, the best way you can think of collision detection is you iterate through all the objects you're interested in colliding with. Um, so I'm not typing game arrow ledges i.x a thousand times. I, I made a couple shortcuts. So I have mx equal to the man's X, MX and MY equal to the man's position, MW and MH equal to the man's uh, bounding box width and height. I have X and Y equal to the current ledge X position and Y position, and I have width and height uh, for the ledge Y. So essentially what we need to do is we need to see if we're intersecting any of the four lines, line segments that make up the ledge rectangle. So the first thing I do is I want to see if I'm rubbing against the right edge. So first I make sure that my Y position is within the range of the, uh, the 
I guess you can say within the range of the, the rectangles uh, width and height to make sure it's even possible for me to be colliding with it on the x-axis. And then what I, I double check to see is if my x left edge is less than the right edge of the box. And this is important, um, my x plus my height, my right edge is greater than the same right edge of the block. And if that's the case, I correct the x to put it outside of the box since it was inside. And then um, I correct the mx test variable, which is just an alias for man's x. Um, I do the reverse of that to see if I'm rubbing against the left edge and perform the correction. Um, this code is, like I said, it's not very straightforward to read, but um, I am going to upload this example so you guys can re uh, have this code and, and utilize and expand upon um, and so forth. So I do the same thing, uh, make sure that um, I am within or at least above or below the ledge as far as the x-axis is concerned, and then if I'm bumping my head, um, I stop that from occurring, and if I'm landing on the ledge, I stop that from occurring as well. Um, there, this is not the most correct collision detection method, but it's, the, it's one of the easier ones without me getting into some advanced physics and vectors and stuff like that. So as you can see, when I arrow around, it's not possible for me to go inside of the squares. So collision detection is working. Um, I will say that I did add something. So now that I have collision detection working, it's great and everything, but most games you can't just fly around the sky for no reason. It makes for a pretty crappy game experience. So what I went ahead and did was uh, I created the beginnings of what we're going to use to have the guy actually live in a world where there's physics and gravity and stuff like that. And the first variable that I did was uh, you'll see that I changed x and y to floats. That's important because we're going to be working with not whole numbers, decimals. And then I created another float called dy, which stands for delta y, which is the change in the man's y position, which is applied once per frame. So as you can see, I had dy here, and I've actually set it to zero ahead of time when he hits his head or lands on the ledge to stop him from moving vertically. So the way I can describe this is we're actually going to make dy work. We're going to apply it every single uh, frame. And I don't really have a generic processing method. Usually I do. Um, I guess I can make one right now. Um, this basically is just going to be my generic method for processing all collision stuff like that um, in the game. So let me just make this real quick. I'll throw it above collision detect. Collision detect probably should have been called from this method, but whatever. And void. What did I call that? Process, game state, game. Gotta hurry up here. All right, so long story short is once per loop, I'm going to take the game man.y and add to it the dy. And something tells me I'm going to be using man a lot here, so let me just make a reference to him. Because I don't want to be typing game dot everything everywhere. That would be a pain in my ass. Alrighty, so now the man moves with Y. You'll notice quickly that <laughs> I screwed up. Um, when I initialize the man, I have to initialize Y, otherwise it becomes a wild value, and it gets added to some added to Y, some random value somewhere, and he flies off the screen. So let me just start him out at zero. So you'll quickly see it actually has no bearing on anything because um, I haven't actually set dy to anything yet. So we're going to program a jump here. And the easiest way to do that is inside process events in our keyboard input, we are going to disable the ability for the man to fly. So we're turning off the man's uh, up and down keys. And instead, if you press once up on the keyboard and He's not already in the air. That's important. That's a shortcut for is equal to zero, but I don't want to confuse you guys anymore. So if he's not already in the air, which is signified by dy or the change in his y position being zero, then we make him in the air. The way we do that is we set uh, the dy equal to some negative value. Let's see what 5 does. Oh, he went up. Um, you'll quickly notice some things seem wrong right away. First one is he's flying. Uh, 
it already, even though up and down don't do anything. And second, when I jump, he goes up and he doesn't come down. And that's because we haven't done anything to turn on gravity. And the way to process gravity, let's see how long this video is. I, I got five minutes to talk about gravity. Uh, inside process, we apply the man's velocity. dy is another shortcut for velocity, delta y. We apply his velocity to his y position, but we have to apply gravity to the velocity. The way we do that is I'm going to define a constant up here. Gravity goes down, so uh, that will be this number. That's our gravity constant. And, as you can guess, every frame we add gravity to dy. I can type. And that will make him fall. That is some really like moon ass weak gravity. Let's make gravity uh, considerably more. There we go. We're getting there. Uh, let's see what happens if I jump. Yep, that's still moon gravity, so I'm just going to keep dialing this up until it works out pretty well. We don't have terminal velocity here, but I don't think we're going to need it. There we go. Now his jump is pretty weak, and uh, man, he is in bad shape. Okay, so. Went ahead and going to make this just a little bit more powerful. That's, that's about right. And then I notice that my jump isn't working, and that's probably because when I land on... So that was you try to do live videos. I want to make my jump stronger. Because he's not jumping very high now, is he? Let's go ahead and make this negative 15. Game programming is a lot about trial and error. I'm also going to have to fix the uh, collision detection, which seems to be screwed up. So I'm just going to throw in a printf call here and see what is going on with the dy when I go to hit. Uh... Percent %g is another way to print out a float, seeing we percent %d prints out a int. So 0.35, for some reason, dy. Oh, I know why. Relax. Order of operations. So when I call process events, collision detection happens after process so that by the time uh, the keys get pressed, I think I need to... Is that right? No, that's not what's causing it. The gravity is getting applied after I set dy to zero. The easiest way to handle this, because I'm getting annoyed, is to just go ahead and set a uh, boolean to, to 1 if he is on a ledge. And that way, he can only jump when he's on a ledge, and that way I'll know. So, game man on ledge 1. And that way deal with this gravity problem anymore. So if he's on a ledge he can jump otherwise he can't and once he jumps he's not on a ledge anymore and that should get us able to at least jump. I have to initialize this. If this doesn't work I'm gonna be pissed. Oh wow I think I have him jumping really high now. How much time do I have left? One minute. All right. I'm going to fix the uh, jumping and then we're probably going to end there and then we're going to uh, correct the um, collision detection to dial that in better uh, next video. So that's way too high. Let's try negative five. It's way too weak. Once again, some trial and error here. Negative ten. That's about right, though he can't make that jump onto the block, so I'm just going to go ahead and make that high enough to make it so he can get on there. There we go. So we got a jumping...